They said a sixth generation fighter was a bridge too far, a mirage of marketing and PowerPoint, but the proof taxied into sunlight when the Boeing F-47 rolled before cameras in March 2025, introduced by President Donald Trump at Joint Base Andrews, Maryland. The paradox hit hard. The aircraft that should not exist arrived after five years of flight testing in the shadows. It looked familiar yet alien, a diamond with edges softened by physics rather than fashion, a machine born to be forgotten by radar. Skeptics called it impossible. The ramp crew called it ready. And in that quiet between engine start and brake release, America's wager on air superiority crossed from rumor into deterrence. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button. It helps us beat the YouTube algorithm. The journey began years earlier when planners watched legacy fleets outrun by range, sensors, and software. Red flag over Nellis, summer of 2022 showed the gap. Simulated enemies masked long-range fires while friendly jets gasped for tanker time. The catalyst arrived as a mandate. Build a fighter that decides faster, strikes farther, and survives longer than anything in the sky. The bureaucratic name was Next Generation Air Dominance, but inside hangars, the team used a planar headline, the airplane that closes every distance. Boeing's digital factory in St. Louis translated that goal into code, then into metal, then into sorties. What emerged was stealth that does not blink. Broadband shaping, not the narrow band tricks of earlier generations, hides the F-47 from low-frequency search arrays and high-frequency fire control radars alike, from the nose, the beam, and the tail. Edges curve, seams vanish, and every antenna is swallowed by skin that works as both armor and sense organ. What this means in combat is patience. The jet loiters where enemies expect a tanker, then appears where they expected safety. The result for commanders is simple. Targets see nothing until the moment they see too much. Range and tempo follow. An adaptive cycle engine, a variable geometry furnace tuned by software, lets the F-47 cruise supersonic without afterburner while sipping fuel. With a combat radius past 1,000 nautical miles, the jet does in one hop what older fighters needed a chain of tankers to attempt. That reach collapses timelines. Response windows shrink from hours to minutes. A carrier strike group two oceans away gains a guardian it does not need to refuel. A forward base gains options instead of vulnerabilities. Speed is not just velocity, it is choice. Before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. Side, the cockpit becomes a command bay. A wide field passive sensor suite paints the battle space without betraying position. An active electronically scanned array, the radar that sculpts energy like a lens of lightning, doubles as a jammer when doctrine demands silence. Data flows through Link 16, the airborne chat room for the joint force but also through hardened mesh networks that do not care which antenna is missing or which satellite is jammed. What this means in combat is awareness that feels unfair. The pilot does not hunt targets. Targets reveal themselves. Payload seals the promise. Internal bays carry air-to-air -air missiles enough to thin a raid and still hold back a reserve, plus long-range strike options sized for warheads once reserved for bombers. Stand-in electronic warfare pods nest inside like ghosts in a pocket. When commanders need punch, the F-47 lifts hypersonic glide vehicles on reinforced stations and turns time into weapon. The effect is arithmetic you can feel. Fewer sorties, more effects, and survivability that compounds with every minute the jet remains untracked. But here is what truly shocked the experts. Autonomy did not ride shotgun. It flew as a loyal wing. The F-47 treats unmanned teammates called Autonomous Collaborative Platforms as extensions of its own reach. One crewed jet at Edwards Air Force Base directed four drones across the Mojave during a trial in November 9th, 2024, delegating radar picket duty, decoy maneuvers, and a simulated strike while never crossing a surface-to-air envelope. The bureaucrats called it a manned-unmanned teaming spiral. The test team called it a clean kill without risk. Proof stacked quickly. Tonopah test range logged pre-dawn briefings where maintainers whispered checklists and telemetry techs called out green pages. Eglin Air Force Base ran captive carry events to stress pylons designed for hypersonics. Nellis Weapons school graduates wrote new tactics in dry desert ink. Colonel Maya Ellison, the combined test force commander, put it this way. After a high threat ingress rehearsal, we built a fighter that does not ask permission from geography. 
Sorties ran long, sorties ran quiet, and every debrief ended with the same word, survivability. Money followed the math. An initial $20 billion seeded the sprint. Then fiscal year, 2026 locked in a line item just over $3.5 billion to widen the pipeline and harden the supply chain. St. Louis bent the frames. Palmdale finished the skins and low observable coatings. Hill Air Force Base stood up the first maintenance schoolhouse. Production targets called for at least 185 airframes, enough to equip multiple combat wings and preserve margin for attrition reserves. The result for taxpayers is endurance, not a prototype that dazzles and dies. Strategic consequences arrived before squadrons did. In the Pacific, distances once owned by adversary missile rings shrank under the F-47's radius and stealth. In Europe, layered air defenses built to trap fourth-generation fighters found gaps where a broadband ghost could slip, mark, and strike. Chinese and Russian platforms deserve respect. They are fast, armed, and supported by dense sensors. The difference is integration under pressure. The F-47 edits the enemy's picture while expanding its own, compressing their decision loop and stretching ours. That is deterrence. Software kept the edge sharp. Digital engineering, model-based from day one, turned upgrades from depot marathons into sprints. New electronic warfare techniques arrived as code, tested across a high-fidelity twin of the jet that lives on servers from Seattle to San Antonio. Crews can achieve modernization in just over three weeks, a process that once took years. Maintainers praise the access panels that actually align, and coatings that cure in hours instead of days. Lieutenant Casey Moreno, a line chief at Edwards, said the quiet part aloud, they designed it for the fight and for the fix. The next horizon is already in motion. Quantum resistant communications guard the mesh against tomorrow's thieves. Artificial intelligence rides the mission computer like a second brain, not to replace pilots, but to amplify them, triaging threats and rehearsing options before a human needs to choose. Hypersonic carriage will scale, not in spectacle, but in practicality. More altitude, more thermal margin, more flexibility. And the loyal wingman will grow bolder, prosecuting targets the crewed jet need never see. This is only the beginning, and the tempo will not slow. The first cadre of instructors gathered at Nellis as summer heat shimmered off the ramp. Pilots from Raptor and Lightning Squadrons cross flowing into a machine that felt both familiar and entirely new. They called themselves Forge Flight, a nod to the way tactics would be hammered, cooled, and rehardened. Syllabus writers blended stealth ingress art from the F-22 with sensor fusion craft from the F-35 then layered in the F-47's loyal wingman control and broadband silence. New debrief tools stitched cockpit video to mission data in near real time. What this meant for training was speed that did not cut corners. Graduates left with instincts tuned for autonomy, saturation, and reach. Logisticians built a different kind of edge. Low observable crews received portable cure units the size of a footlocker letting them restore skin panels at a forward base in a few hours rather than a week. Digital work cards guided maintainers through adhesive mixes and temperature windows without guesswork, and a handheld scanner confirmed smoothness down to a hair's breadth. Spare parts arrived with radio tags tied to a living bill of material, so every bolt told its story. The result was stealth that stayed stealthy after weather, salt, and sand. Availability rose, sortie counts climbed, Readiness stopped depending on perfect conditions. Cold proved the next teacher. At Eielson in Alaska, the test team parked an F-47 on the line through a night that fell to 40 below, then woke the jet before dawn with frost still clinging to intake lips. Sensors that had loved the desert faced crystals and glare. Coatings that had shrugged off heat met contraction without spidering. Engineers measured, adjusted, and ran another day in even colder air. The payoff was confidence that range would truly be range in winter, and that crews could launch under aurora skies with the same trust they felt in Nevada heat. Survivability extended to climate. Naval aviators looked over the fence and asked their own questions. At Patuxent River, a shore-based handling trial used a surrogate nose gear and tie-down scheme to simulate deck moves, not a promise of a naval variant, but a study in options. Launch bars and arresting hooks were not the point. The point was how a broadband stealth shape behaves among salt spray, non-skid grit, and catapult shock. The finding was simple and strategic. 
Joint integration improves when machines share assumptions, and the F-47 was built with margins that allow serious conversations rather than wishful thinking. Interoperability gained traction. Electronic warfare matured from a tactic into an atmosphere. The F-47's cognitive suite listened first, learned patterns second, and sculpted energy third, turning enemy search beams into dead ends and guiding friendly packets through hostile clutter. Where earlier jets employed playbooks, this one wrote lines on the fly, deciding when to be glass, when to be smoke, and when to be a mirror. In exercises over the Gulf, ground arrays that usually pinned fighters to corridors found themselves chasing ghosts. The mission effect was priceless. Adversary operators burned minutes. Our crews banked options. Time favored deterrence. Weapons integration moved beyond counts and into choreography. The Bay Geometry accepted the Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, an air-to-air -air spear built for long-range ambush, alongside modular strike rounds that swap seekers without changing mass. Captive carries at Eglin proved fit. Live fires on the sea test range proved rhythm. A hypersonic glide vehicle rode a reinforced station during a thermal profile, telemetry showing healthy margins. What this means in combat is fewer compromises between the first shot and the last. A single sortie can thin an incoming raid, blind a sensor field, and leave the jet with reserve for the unknown. Networks became the invisible runway. The jet spoke Link 16 when needed, but also used the Air Battle Management Cloud, a mouthful formerly called Joint All Domain Command and Control, to stitch shooters and sensors into a resilient web. Edge nodes lived on tankers, drones, and ground vehicles, so no single failure cut the thread. Mission apps arrived over the mesh like updates on a phone, containerized, verified, and removable. Then came the vignette that spread quietly through briefing rooms. Launch from Anderson before sunrise, climb clean and supersonic to the first island chain, and loiter beyond threat rings while four loyal wingmen fan outward. One drone becomes a picket, another a decoy, a third a sensor thief, a fourth a strike option. Industry scaled with discipline rather than haste. Apprentices in St. Louis learned from machinists who kept notebooks from the Raptor era, while Palmdale Coatings shops paired master technicians with young chemists who tuned cure cycles in software before they touched a spray gun. A supply line stretched from Wichita to Wichita Falls to the Puget Sound, thousands of men and women stitching tolerances to pride. Contracts included clawbacks for sloppy quality and bonuses for early durability wins. The maintainer syllabus matured alongside the tactics, because survivability begins with hands-on metal. At Hill, the power plant team rehearsed adaptive cycle engine swaps with a modular cart that slides the core like a drawer, turning what once demanded a weekend into a shift. Augmented reality visors overlaid torque values, safety clears, and harness routes, cutting errors before they happened. Low observable artisans used smart rollers to lay edge tapes with micrometer consistency then cured seams with portable heaters that report humidity and temperature in real time. Allies learned the cadence in joint trials that felt less like demonstrations and more like rehearsals. During Northern Edge over Alaska, a Royal Air Force Typhoon and a Royal Australian Air Force Growler fed the mesh, while an F-47 ghosted the range boundaries and queued an Aegis destroyer beyond the horizon. The bureaucratic label was combined interoperability validation but operators saw something cleaner, a coalition strike package with fewer radio calls and more outcomes. Resilience moved beyond the airframe and into the flows of data and power that keep a force coherent. Cyber teams at Kirtland hardened the mission computer with a zero trust spine that treats every process like a stranger until proven otherwise. The human machine fit proved decisive in ways that rarely make headlines. The cockpit's ultra-wide display carried a calm palette with only three priorities at once, while tactile cues in the throttle nudged attention without stealing eyes. Voice commands handled the busy work, and an onboard agent proposed courses of action with reasons rather than riddles. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means a lot.